Hello, and welcome to the Sports Show with Bob Spino. We're actually one short tonight. Uh, my esteemed colleague cannot make it, so I'm doing this uh, quick little hitter myself. And we're just going to pick the games of the college and the pro. Um, so let's get right to it. Okay. Uh, the first game on this list is um, Illinois, Virginia. And I like Virginia. Um, it just actually started, I believe, and uh, they're home, and they look really good last week. And um, I'm definitely picking Virginia over Illinois. That's my first pick. Okay, uh, second pick, West, Western Kentucky against Army. It's at, it's at the Army. It's in Blackfield. Um, I'm going to go with the Army. Uh, I think that um, they've been pretty good the last couple of years, and I think they'll win that game. Uh, VMI against Kent State. Ooh, uh, it's kind of close. Kent's at home. It's kind of a toss-up. I'll lean Kent State because they're home. Uh, Norfolk State versus Wake Forest. Okay. Um, don't know too much about either one. Uh, I'm, I'll go. I'll go with Wake Forest. Norfolk is um, is a um, unknown here. Okay, Alabama State at Auburn. Auburn, uh, they're in the top 25. Alabama State's not even ranked. And Auburn's home. <clears throat> Indiana State against Northwestern. Um, Northwestern didn't impress me all that much, but they did lose their first game on the road, but they're home now. Indiana State. Eh, you know what? You got to go with a road team once. I'll go with Indiana State. Um, Kennesaw State against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech really should have lost that game last week. They pulled it out against West Virginia. Um, but I'm going with Georgia Tech in this one. <clears throat> Miami of Ohio against Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, they played a decent game against uh, Ohio State, but um, Ohio State just had a little too much for them. But this time they're home, and I think they'll win. Uh, they got Miami of Ohio, and I think they, they'll beat them. Although Miami of Ohio is pretty good. Um, we, but we're, I'm going to pick Minnesota. Tulsa at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Or Here's the big one. Oregon <clears throat> against Ohio State. Ohio State, guys, is not that good, okay? Uh, they're not as good as they were. Their quarterback is young. Now, he may get better, and they may get better. Uh, they did win last week, but they struggled. Uh, it wasn't the same kind of, a, you know, Ohio State win that you, you would be expecting. Oregon's a great team. They're 12th in the, in the country. And UCLA plays them in a couple of weeks. It should be interesting. And the game's at UCLA. Um, I think UCLA can flip them, but uh, we'll get to that another week. Right now, I'm going to go with Ohio State. They're home, and they should win. But it'll be, it'll be tough. Oregon won't let them walk all over them, I'm sure. Oregon will, will fight them pretty hard. But uh, I think Ohio State. Uh, Pittsburgh at Tennessee, Pittsburgh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Pittsburgh played um, pretty good last week. Uh, they're at Tennessee, T Tennessee won last week, they're home, I I'm going Tennessee. Notice, guys, I'm going with a lot of home teams, and I'll tell you why. Because the home, I I'm here to teach you guys, and the home team means a lot. And if you don't think that's not right, the previous four games played yesterday were all won by the home team. And this has been going on for years, this is nothing new. No matter who's on the field. No matter who's playing, no matter who's great, no matter who's not, it's all about the home team, guys. So, you know, um, but that doesn't mean the road team can't win. And it doesn't mean I won't pick them because if they're better and, and if they can win on the road and I think they can win, I'll pick them. But in this game, it's going to be a toss up with Tennessee. I'm giving it to Tennessee. Guys, there's a reason that the home team is always favored by three going in, you know, every week in Vegas. They know what I know. Home team means a lot, a lot more than ESPN will tell you it does um south carolina east carolina i'll go with south carolina now they're a road team but i think they're a little better so i'll go with them youngstown state against michigan state michigan state um florida against southern florida hmm interesting you know i, I wasn't impressed with florida last week they played a really weak team and didn't play all that well i'm gonna go with the upset here say Southern Florida, they always have a really good team and uh, they're pretty solid. So I'm going to go with them in the upset. 
Uh, okay. Morgan State at Tulane. Tulane. Oh, Wyoming at Northern Illinois. Hmm. I'll go with Wyoming here. I mean, they're the road team, but I'm going to go with them. Uh, Middle Tennessee against Virginia Tech. I hope you're writing all this down, guys, because, you know, let me know how good I did or didn't do. Okay, Middle Tennessee against Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Okay. And, and I'm going on the record, guys, that's saying that. And I know Michigan took a hit. And, and they, I don't, they're coming up on this list, I think, down here. I know they took a hit last year or last week when uh, the, the wide receiver blew his knee out. But I still think they're good enough. And I know he was a great player. I still think they're good enough to beat Ohio State and upset them at the end of the year. I'm calling it now. Okay. Rutgers and Syracuse. It's at the Carrier Dome, actually. Oh, I thought it was in – some. my doctor actually told me he's a Rutgers fan. He told me it was in Rutgers. It is not. Okay. It's up in Cuse. I just don't believe in Cuse. Rutgers is better. I love their coach. We're, we're going to try to have them on in the future. And uh, so I'm going Rutgers. Uh, Toledo at Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Robert Morris at Central Michigan. Central Michigan. They're home. Uh, Purdue at Connecticut. Connecticut doesn't look very good. Uh, I'm going to go for doing this one. Like I said, guys, I do pick road teams. Uh, Murray State at Cincy. I'm going with Cincy. They're seven in the country. Murray State shouldn't give them, you know, a hard time. Cincinnati, Buffalo at Nebraska. Well, Nebraska is always struggling the last couple of years. They've had a lot of trouble up there or down there. Um, Buffalo is pretty good, but I'm going with Nebraska. They got to win. They got to win one game. Um, Air Force. Ooh, the battle of the um, the military. It's Air Force against Navy. Navy's home. I don't know if they're quite as good as they have been in the past. Air, Air, I think Air Force likes to throw. Mm. Mm. Oh, let's go with Air Force. Well, let's go with the upset. Penn State against Ball State. Penn State. They're home anyway. Uh, Boston College at Massachusetts. Ooh. Let's go with Boston College. Um, I don't know what Mass. I don't know how good Massachusetts really is. But they're home, so you never know. You never know. They could win it. Um, Temple at Akron. Hmm. Hmm. Temple. Okay. California TCU. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Okay. TCU in a close, a close one. Um, Georgia Southern at, at FAU. Um, FAU, Texas A&M, ooh, fifth in the country against, against Colorado Buffs. Uh, you know, Colorado's a lot better at home than they are on the road. Uh, mm, I'll give Texas A&M the edge, but it's going to be close. Don't be surprised if Colorado wins the game. Uh, Georgia, UAB, Georgia. Although I, I believe one of the defensive players got hurt this past week, and that could be a big loss. They don't have a, an offense and a quarterback right now. But they're home, and they should be able to take UAB out. Bama against Mercer. Bama. Bama against anybody. Bama. <laughs> Bama's home, no less. So, yeah. Uh, Southern Alabama against Bowling Green. Bowling Green. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Nine against ten. Iowa State, Iowa. Iowa's pretty darn good. They're pretty underrated. Well, not underrated. They're pretty high ranked, but um, they're pretty good. And so is Iowa State. You know, when you have these uh, head-to-heads, rivals, rival games, anything could happen. Uh, they hate each other going in. Ohio State – I'm sorry, Ohio State. Iowa State is home, and I'll give them the edge because of that, but it's going to be real tight. That, that one is a pick em. Uh I'm going to go Iowa State, though. Okay. Uh, NC State at Clemson – I'm sorry, South Carolina – SC State at Clemson, South Carolina State. Um, Clemson. Uh, I don't think they're as good as they were, folks, but Clemson. Uh, LIU Post against West Virginia. West Virginia. They should have won last week. Illinois State at Western Michigan. Hmm. Let's go with Western Michigan. I'm not their home. Portland State at Washington State. Washington State. Not that either team's that good, 
but Washington State is, you know, uh, Portland, uh, Portland State's on the road. So Lamar against UT San Antonio, UT San Antonio. Gardner Webb against Charlotte. That's, that's everybody's gonna be waiting for that game. <laughs> um, Charlotte. North Central, North Carolina Central at Marshall. Uh, how about Marshall? Mm -hmm. Houston at Rice. Houston. Uh, Bethane Cookman at U, uh, University of Central Florida. UCF, I got. Liberty at Troy. Boy, this is a biggie. I'm going with Troy. Uh, Nicholas, Nickel, Nickel State against Louisiana. Louisiana. Appalachian State against Miami. Miami, they'll come back. They'll win the game. They got smoke last week by Bama. Uh, Eastern Kentucky, Louisville. Louisville. Eastern Michigan against an overrated, lousy coach, lousy quarterback, Wisconsin, who should, really should have beat Penn State. They'll beat Eastern Michigan, but they have a lot of issues. They're going nowhere. I, I didn't like what I saw. And the quarterback's really not that good, and the coach is even worse. Grambling at Southern Miss, Southern Miss. Hampton at Old Dominion. Boy, oh boy, I don't miss any pick, even these picks. Um, Old Dominion. NC State at Mississippi State. Hmm. Everybody is saying on ESPN, NC State is an 83% chance to win. God forbid that I should go against ESPN. But I'm gonna. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with um, Mississippi State. And that would, I, I did, this one's my skunker pick because I want to skunk ESPN. Let's see if I can pull it off. Memphis at um, Arkansas State. Arkansas State. New Mexico State at New Mexico. Hmm. Okay. Cross state rival. New Mexico. North, Northern Texas at SMU. SMU. Southeast Louisiana against Louisiana Tech. That's another biggie that we're all, we can't wait to have a start. <laughs> Louisiana Tech. Stephen F. Austin. I love that guy. Team. The guy's great, though. He was, uh, he was all pro Texas. Uh, against Texas Tech. Uh, Texas Tech. Southern Illinois against Kansas State. K-State. Texas against Arkansas, or as we say in the business. Arkansas. Uh, I'm going to go to Arkansas, actually. I don't know if I believe in Texas totally. I want to see them a little more. I'm going to go to Arkansas on an upset. Uh, Texas Southern and Baylor. Eh, Baylor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Texas State at FIU. Texas State. Uh, Western Carolina gets Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, I want you, I want you guys to know down there. The U ain't winning anything either. Um, you guys struggled against Tulane at home. I hope you can do better this week against Western Carolina. But when you have to play the big teams, you're not you're not fourth best in the country. You're not top five. You're not top ten either. Not from what I saw. Tulane almost took you out. I, I know you got to play every game, and every game's different, and it's game to game. But suck is suck too. And Oklahoma, you you kind of suck. So. Or as my friend used to say, and I'll do it in his voice, why do I suck? Well, I don't know, but you do. Um, Austin P against Old Miss. Um, Old Miss. Georgia State against North Carolina. You, they took a big hit from being 10th to 24th. Um, they, they don't have any wide receivers anymore, folks. They still got the quarterback, though. But they're good enough to win this one. They'll be Georgia State. Idaho, Idaho against Indiana. I'll go with the Hoosiers. For, I'll go with the Hoosiers. Um, Howard at Maryland. Maryland looked pretty good last week. They surprised us all. Obviously, they'll win this week to play Howard. So. Uh, Missouri against Kentucky. Hmm. I, picked Kentucky. I think I picked Kentucky last week, so I'm going to pick Kentucky. Washington at Michigan. Michigan. Washington's not very good. And Michigan's home, and I'm pretty high on them. McNeese State at LSU. Believe me, guys in LSU, don't hate me. I don't hate you back. I just knew you weren't beating us. Uh, LSU, you'll kill them. You do need to fix your defense, though. It's extremely weak. Um, 
and your quarterback's not all that good. You can't throw deep. Uh, Jacksonville State against Florida State. Florida State. Uh, Vandy. Uh, and, you know, think about Florida State. They played really great against Notre Dame, but I want to say something about Notre Dame, too. You ain't that good either. It's just like I said, you, you lost your best defensive player. I think the Browns got a steal in the draft when they took him. I think the Browns are going to flip Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll get into that because I'm going to do throws, too. Um, the pro picks. But, uh, yeah, you're not as good, and your defense is not as good, and you're not going to win the national. You can just skip that. Um, but you're a Catholic school, and I'm a Catholic, and I love you for that. Although lately you've been a little liberal. I don't, like, I don't love you for that. But, um, but anyway, uh, we'll get back to that. Notre Dame, <laughs> we'll do that on another show. We'll talk about that. Um, uh, okay, so I got Notre Dame. She, where did I leave off? I will look at that guy. Okay. Yeah, you'll you'll win today. I, that I know. What I don't know is where, where you went. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I lost my, my place on this. Um, here we go. How about Vanderbilt and uh, Colorado State? Colorado State. They're, they, they're pretty, uh, they got an open attack. I think they'll be San Diego State at Arizona. Arizona's not that good. Um, but but they're, I think they can beat them. I think they'll win. Cal Poly at Fresno. Fresno will win. We play them next week. You see, like, they're pretty pretty darn good. I think they'll win today. And next week, we'll slosh them. Uh, Utah at uh, BYU. Uh, Utah's pretty good. BYU's tough at home. I'm going to go with Utah, though. They're, they're the road team, but, you know, I'll, I'll go with them. Stanford at USC. Uh USC, and, and by the way, and I'm not saying this because I'm UCLA, uh, but you guys ain't that good. You pulled away late. You, I believe you you just lost a defensive player that uh, went to a different school because you're going to be able to play right away. He's one of your better players on day. Um, you had to pull away late. Stanford's pretty good, you know, and I believe they changed their quarterback to the one they liked coming into this game. You know what? Stanford may take them out. They've beaten them in SC before. I'm going to lean towards Stanford. It's going to be a toss-up. I'm probably going to kick myself. Let's see. will probably find a way to, you know, have the rest help them win it. They always do at home. But uh, I'm going to go with Stanford. Uh, I think that the kid's going to play pretty well. Idaho State at Nevada. Nevada. UNLV at Arizona State. All right. I'll go with Arizona State. Why at Oregon State? Oregon State. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, did I miss anything? We're going to go back just to check. I don't think so. Uh, let's see where I left off. No, I think that's it. Uh, these are my picks for the week. A lot of teams are actually not playing this week. They're on buys. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, so that's what I got. And now we're going to do the pros, actually. We're going to pop into that one second. And here it is. Okay, uh, for tomorrow's games and the pros, Broncos, Giants. Everybody's high in the Giants. I'm not. Uh, Denver's not great. The Giants are home. They should win the first home game, but I'm going with Denver. Uh, I don't believe in the Giants' defense. They're, they're trash. Giants are trash. Dallas or Endor Washington's going to win that division. You can write that down. And I want everybody to watch because I want you to remember what I said. Uh, I'm not afraid to stick it out. You know what I mean? Okay, uh, next game, New England Patriots at the Jets. Ooh, this says at the Jets. I thought that game was in New England. This, that's wrong right there. I believe that game's in New England. Um, so this thing is wrong. Uh, I'm going with New England to beat the, beat the Jets, okay? Um, and here's the reason why it's wrong. Because they did not uh, – they did not put it the way it was supposed to be. This is the wrong schedule. So I will get to the schedule. They did the wrong thing. Okay. Now I got it. Okay. Week one. There you go. Computer let me down. Um, <clears throat> okay. Here you go. Okay. I, I said that uh, Denver will beat the Giants, and I believe they will. Um, okay. Uh, we got New England at home against the Jets, and I, I'm sorry, not the Jets. Oh, this is all messed up. Okay, um, let's do it again. 
Jags at Texans. Texans. Chargers, who are, I mean, they're going to be really good, They but they do have a new coach, and it's always a question mark. Just ask the LSU fans about that with the new coaches. You never know what you're getting. Chargers had a lot of games that year they should have won. I never seen one team get so, so shafted in the course of a season like they did at the end of games. The ref just took games away from them. They should, had no business doing it. But the Chargers blew a few, too. Chargers at Washington. I picked Washington to win a division. I'm going to lean Washington. Chargers could upset them, though. Seahawks at the Colts. Guess what, folks? What a great recovery um, Wentz made. He's going to start. So with him starting and with that defense, I'm going with the Colts. Now we got it right. Jets at the Panthers. Panthers, although I do think uh, Wilson's great, a great quarterback, great pick by the Jets. But I think Sam Darnold wants to get even with him. I think he will. Panthers uh, over the Jets. Vikings and the Bill are the Bengals. Vikings and the Bengals. The Bengals. Vikings have no D. They're, they're, they, and they got no quarterback. Kirk Cousins ought to retire for the good of the Vikings. Uh, Cardinals at the Titans. Um, the Titans. They're going to beat them. I mean, they're, 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 look, I, don't, I know Murray's a good quarterback. I don't think he's a great one. Um, so Titans, yeah, they got a much more solid team. The running back, Henry's great, and uh, and uh, and Tannehill's really good. So I'm going with the Titans. The 49ers at the Lions. Lions, folks, I think they're going to win this game. 49ers aren't what they were. Uh, I like the Lions. I like uh, the the quarterback switch. They're going to be pretty good. Golf's going to be okay. Lions. Steelers and the Bills. This is a great game. And I'm going to tell you what I told all my friends. Last year when they played. Oh, Pittsburgh, they were 11-0. It was the weakest 11-0 folks I've ever seen. Although they did get a great running back. who was I, I was hoping the Bills would get because I like them and the Chiefs. They're my two favorite teams. And, yes, I have two. I'm keeping them because they sucked for years, and I kept them. So I'm still keeping them. Um, the Bills, they're going to beat them. They're home. Uh, um, Josh Allen, don't lose a home game. Road games, big ones, eh. I still have issues with that. I still think he can be better. I still have some question marks about him, but I'm going with the Bills. They're going to clock them. I, I know they're going to be tough. It's going to be tough with Ben and Harris now and the D. And I think Watches re, he re upped he re upped with them. He extend had an extended contract. I'm going with the Bills though. He just signed an extension. Eagles and Falcons. <laughs> the battle of the stinks, you know. Um, <clears throat> The Battle of the Stinks. Uh, I'm going with the Eagles, though. And um, here's why. Because they're home, okay? They're, they're home and, and wait a minute. No, I'm going with the Falcons, folks. My fault. And the reason I'm doing that is that both teams stink. And, um, yeah, the Falcons are home. So, they're a better, I guess they're a better brand of stink in this case. So I'm going with the Falcons. Um, and, and the reason I got confused, I lost my page and popped out on me again. I don't know what's going on with that. The Browns and the Chiefs, heck of a game. I think the Brown, the Browns are gonna have a great year. They're gonna they're gonna overtake Pittsburgh for the division. They really are. Um, I believe that totally. Um, but they're not gonna win this game. It's Mahomes and the boys. Kansas City's the best team in. in Pretty much in football, them Tampa Bay, the Rams, they're all the elite teams now. Although the Rams haven't done anything yet, but I'm putting them up there. Uh, Chiefs over the Browns and a tough one. Browns are going to give all they can handle. I do think the Chiefs will win, though. Packers at the Saints. I'm going with the Packers, even though Aaron Rodgers is a little wuss, even though he's a great player. He's a good individual. You know what he's like? This is what Rodgers is like. He's like a one-on-one -on -one player in the NBA. Uh, gets all the stats, makes the all-star games, wins the, pri the personal trophies. But outside of that one year, and I think because he had a great defense and running backs and even wide receivers, that's why he won. He can't, he can't win when he has a really good team. He has to have a superior team. The guy's an out-and-out -out choke. He's a crybaby. He's a weirdo. And that all plays into your, you know, when you have to play those big games, that plays into it. Yeah, you can win a lot of games during the year. You can win, you know, your, your games when you're playing, you know, the Eagles now and teams like that. But you ain't going to win when you got to play the good teams. Tom Brady went in there and showed him who the, 
the greatest player is, who's the boss. And anybody that says that Aaron Rodgers is better than Brady needs serious help. They need a doctor right away because they're insane. They need, they need my associate because Rob is actually a psychologist and you need to go see Rob and I'll give you his number because you're screwed. You're, you're a bunch of screwballs. You know, like Bugs Bunny used to do with the sign screwball. That's what you guys are. He, Aaron Rodgers ain't even close. To Tom Brady, not even close. Tom Brady can win with, with a, a, a midget league team. He can, beat, he can beat the pros with a midget league. You know, and uh, Aaron Rodgers is a midget in his mind. That's, he's, you know, he's got great talent, but he's, he's a loser. He's just an out and out. Um, I used to laugh at people like that when I was a kid because everybody would think, oh, we're great. And everybody would be on the hype. I'm not about hype. I'm about real. And the, and the reality is, he's a loser. Okay, enough said. Um, now we're going to, but he'll win this game. Okay, I forgot. He'll win this game because the Saints don't have their own uh, star anymore who was a little soft too at times, but he was amazing. You know, Drew Brees used to make me crazy because he was too soft. That's because he got a soft personality. I did too, folks, growing up. I wanted to be a priest at one time. I'm a nice guy, but I realized not, but not when I played ball, you were not my friend if you were on the other team. I was tough. I won. I was a great basketball player. I played NBA players and held my own. You weren't winning. Sorry. And I played good NBA players, not bad ones. You ain't winning. Sorry. Unless you're on my team, of course. But I got the Packers. And that's what Breeze was. You know, great player, softer than he should have been. But I loved him. I mean, I knew he was great at Purdue. He used to beat Notre Dame, go into Notre Dame and beat him. I knew at Purdue he was going to be a great player. And I did, too. I'm not making it up. I'm that kind of insightful. I knew that. But still, he could, he could have been a little tougher on the field. Brady used him like, like, a, <laughs> like a tool. Of course, he uses everybody. But, you know. And speaking of, okay, we'll get that in a minute. Um, Broncos, Giants, as I said, Broncos, Dolphins at the Patriots. There we go. Now we have the schedule. Right. This thing's finally working. Um, the Finns will lose. I don't believe in Tua. Um, they wanted to look, I know he's good. I know he had injuries, but he's ready now. He's over that. I know a hip injury can be, it can mess you up forever though. It could. He had a bad injury, really bad. He broke the leg and messed up the hip, but, um, yeah, I mean, but as a, pro, I just don't think he's that great. I, I put it this way: I thought Mac Jones, who's now you know going to start tomorrow, was a better quarterback for Alabama than Tua was before he got hurt. I just didn't believe in Tua, and I still don't. And I know the Dolphins um, wanted to uh, actually bench him last year, and even thought about trading him for a little while. I really don't believe in this guy. I don't think Miami's going to step up and and trick anybody this year. I don't think that their, their defense is good. I think New England's going to take them out. And weirdly enough, it's the newest Alabama quarterback going against the previous one before him. And I think New England's going to beat them. Belichick's a better coach. They got a better D. They're, gonna, they're home. They got it. Bears and the Rams. I was going to take this in my suicide pool. I didn't. I took Brady. And he saved me, like always. Uh, but the Rams are good. They're, they're going to smoke the Bears. And, I, I, you know, Fields is better than I thought. He's better on the run, but I still want to see him play a little bit more before I'm sure on him. Um, Rams, they're going to beat him bad. Okay, Monday night we have uh, the Ravens. Baltimore against the Raiders. I'm going with the Raiders. The Ravens are all banged up. By the way, Baltimore season's over, okay, because they've already had major injuries. And I know because when I was growing up as a Chiefs fan, a Bills fan, I used to be so excited in June and July. Then August came, we started getting hurt. And I can't stand the preseason. I wish I'd get rid of it. Like, oh, we need the reps. Okay. Okay. Sure. You need the injuries that are going to finish you, finish you guys for the year before it even starts. And that's what that's what happened with the Ravens. I know the coach, Harbaugh, took heat for losing um, the running back. Um, but, um, you know, he, he was their starting running back. And he was the guy I wanted in Kansas City. You know, I mean, the guy from Ohio State. So, but no, get rid of the preseason, please. It's a, it's a joke. Too many people are getting hurt. Or if you're going to have it, just play the guys that are trying to make the team. Don't play the stars. Stop it. Because it's just dumb. It's dumb. I don't, look, 
he can justify it all he wants, Hardball, but it was a dumb move, you know? And I'm sure nobody knows that better than him. He's probably kicking himself. But I'm going to say something um, about Lamar Jackson. He's a good quarterback. He's not a great one. In my mind, he's not even a quarterback. He's a running back. He should be standing behind the quarterback. That's why they call it running back. Quarterback is the general. The quarterback throws the ball. Quarterback stay in pocket. We win game. Wow. <laughs> That's how we do it. That's how, uh, uh, look, running quarterbacks don't make it in this league. They never have. The pocket ones win. Ain't that right, Tom Brady? Ain't that right, Eli Manning? Ain't that right, Peyton Manning? Ain't that right, um, John, Joe Montana? <laughs> Ain't that right? I don't want to say John Elway because he did both, but his strength was his arm. He knew when to run. You know, if you want to roll out, that's different. But you want to run for a living, that's bad. Ain't that right, Josh Allen, who ran too much in the first two years? What did that do you? Made you fumble a lot and get hurt. Um, you know, I can go on and on. You know, ain't that right, Ken Stabler? <laughs> ain't that right, uh, Terry Bradshaw? Because you couldn't run. Um, <laughs> let's go. Let's go back. Let's play that game. Let's. Uh, how about uh, Johnny Unitas? Was he a runner? No. Was oh, was Fran the man targeted a runner? You bet he was. How many times did he win? Can you see my zero? Yeah. Okay. They don't win. I learned it from Bobby Douglas. You know who Bobby Douglas was? He was the running, oh, I'm sorry, he was the quarterback that ran for Chicago. He ran more than Walter Payton did half the time. For 10 years, that team stunk until they got Jimmy McMahon, who was a pocket quarterback and threw, and a monster defense, and a couple of really good receivers. You know, and, and um, so, but when Bobby Douglas was there, they were a joke. He couldn't throw the ball from, you know, Five yards down the field, but with a lot of, he could he could not throw the ball five yards without it bouncing on a hop. He couldn't get it to the guy, but he could run. And was and and you know, I know a lot of people think, well, you're picking on quarterbacks that could run. That means blacks. No, Bobby Douglas was whiter than me. He could, and that's where I learned it from. I realized running quarterbacks can't make it in this league, and don't. And Lamar Jackson is one of the above. Why do you think the the Titans beat him in the playoff because they, I said all year, just box this guy in because he was beat Philly. He was beat Miami. He was stunk back then the first year. He was, believe me, I kept saying those those teams stunk. That's why. And, you know, they would let him run all over the place. But finally, I kept saying, put him in a little box and you can stop him. Tennessee must have heard me because they just, they designed something to keep him in a little hole, a little box, and he couldn't do it. I always said, let him beat you with his arm because he can't. And he didn't. And weirdly enough, the next year when the Chiefs knocked him out, you know what he said on the post game? I don't know. They had the same defense as Tennessee did when we lost. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And I got to tell you, that one year when they were playing, and I forget who they were playing, might have been the Colts. Okay. Um, I think it was, the, uh, it was the Colts in the playoffs. And um, they were, they were put, they were, playing him and he was terrible and i know that um the quarterback for the uh the the uh the ravens at the time kept wanting to go in the game and uh he had his helmet on three different times who was a pocket pass he was a great, he won the super bowl with that and um they never put him in and you know what they lost the game and if they just put him in once um they would have won the game that's really the truth. And they didn't. And uh, I'm telling you, he's just not that good. Like, he's just not. So you need to, um, you need to dump that because he, um, uh, he'll, I will say this, okay? I will say this. He will never win a Super Bowl there. I don't think he'll ever win a Super Bowl anyway. And I don't think the Ravens, uh, will ever win a Super Bowl as long as he's the quarterback. That's a big statement, folks. Um, but I believe it because the guy is just not very good. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people are high on him. I don't know why, but uh, I don't. I mean, they're just not very good, and he's just not very good. So, um, like I said, just don't 
just don't get into that because um, he's just, he's never going to win. So again, I am not going with the Ravens this week. I'm going with the Oakland slash Vegas slash LA slash Oakland slash Raiders, whatever you want to call. Because they've been in, in a million cities <laughs> and they keep changing their, their names. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I don't, uh, I just don't, um, I, I just don't see Baltimore going. Baltimore's going to have a tough time. They're going to finish in third place, actually, um, because uh, they're not going to be able to beat uh, Cleveland. And they're not going to be able to beat Pittsburgh because they're both better. Uh, and that's really the truth. Um, but, um, yeah, I got the Ravens, and and it was Joe Flacco that had his helmet on three times. I almost totally – I couldn't remember his darn name. But it was Joe Flacco. And if they played him, he um, – they would have won that game and advanced in the playoffs. But they didn't. They wanted to go with, the, you know, uh, Lamar. He was a rookie. And – They've tried to make a statement. It was the wrong statement because they should have just went with Flacco. He'd won the Super Bowl a couple of years before. It was ridiculous. But yeah, that's what happens when you cut off your nose to spite your face. And um, we just got back from Cooperstown. Now we're going to change the subject a little bit. Um, we had a great time uh, and, and we um, we filmed inside the museum. We did two of the, two of the floors and uh, let me tell you, um, I know that there's one section in there that has the old stadiums, okay? Where the, the teams played before they moved to the stadiums they are now. And when I saw it, I realized that this is really iconic. Baseball, and I know baseball is iconic. It is the American sport. It, it's as American as the flag and apple pie and all. Coca-Cola, as they say, as the old commercial used to say. But um, it, it's what got us through everything, the whole last century, including the wars. And it, that's why it's the best. And it's still number two as most loved after the NFL. It's not, basketball is not in hockey. Not, hockey never will be. Hockey's more Canadian. And soccer, forget it. That's not even on the list. That's a joke. But um, it'll never be number one here, never. But um, don't let anybody BS you. That's, that's garbage. But um, it really is uh, what it was all about. It really was our, you know, the Japanese who were rotten as hell in the Second World War. Used to, when they were ready to kill us, and they did a lot. They were vicious. Don't let anybody tell you they weren't, because they were. Um, my dad fought in that war, I know. And, and, um, and if they tell you anything now, they're lying. We were not the enemy. We had every right to drop that bomb. So, because um, they weren't going to give up, they were going to kill us. They never lost a war previous to that in their history. Neither did we. We went. It was like two teams undefeated. We won. That's it. Um, but anyway, uh, they when, when they would come at us trying to kill us, they would scream, you know, "Die, Babe Ruth." So there you go. And he was loved in, in baseball. In Japan is loved. And they're good people now, but they weren't at that time. It happens. You know, sometimes you're good, sometimes you ain't. The United States is great. We had a few bad, bad black spots, but we're great. And we freed the world from tyranny. So, and baseball helped drive that. So, you know, when Bob Hope, who weirdly enough owned a team, he owned the Pirates, he was part owner. And Bing Crosby he used to sing with him when they were a comedy team together. He owned, um, I'm sorry, Bob Hope owned the Indians. And, and Bing on the Pirates. But um, they used to jab at each other sometimes in the comedy skits about it. You know, finally Hope did win in 1948. But, you know, the Pirates were great through that time. And Hope took a lot of, took, took a lot of razzing for it until they finally won. <clears throat> but as Bob Hope, who's American as baseball, who's an American as apple pie and the whole thing, if he would go out there and entertain the troops like he did, and he would always bring on the hottest actress at the time, no matter what year it was, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. And he would go, I just wanted you to know what you're fighting for. And she'd come out and like a bikini for that. And the guys would roar. But you know what? You're also fighting for 
I want you to know what you're playing for as well with with baseball because it is just as much an American thing to fight for as as the girl was, as the flag is. It's all wrapped up. We are American. Baseball is America. And we had a great time. We saw Derek Jeter. Uh, Michael Jordan was, was there. We saw him hand with Patrick Ewing, which I thought was funny because Patrick Ewing must be like, not you again. You, you're trying to win again, trying to beat me again. Marv Shah was there. And it was wild. Uh, th- there was a bunch of parties that night. Um, and we got to go to the induction. We saw everything. Larry Walker, you're the best buddy. You were great. We, I, you gave the best speech. I know everybody was high on Derek's speech. Uh, it was good, really good, but it was not Larry Walker's speech. It was not Larry Walker's speech. He was funny. He was great. He talked about the 94 uh, Montreal Expos that he was on that should have won the World Series, but everybody decided to strike and they canceled the series. First time in 90 years since John McGraw canceled it in 1904 because he thought the American League was, was juniors, little kids. That's how they got their name, the junior circuit, the American League, because he refused to play. And he was manager with the New York Giants, and uh, he just refused to play. He goes, they're not good enough to play, and I'm not doing it. And uh, he, they didn't. And Larry Walker said it. He said, I really would have liked that chance to win. Larry, you would have won. I know a lot of people at the Yankees were good, and they said, no, they were they would not have. Gary Jeter was still on the farm. <laughs> Those guys were still on the farm. Yankees weren't ready. They lost the next year after having a two game to none lead to three out of five to Seattle. They lost three games in a row on the road in Seattle. So they weren't ready and they weren't winning. So, but Larry Walker, you were winning. You had Pedro, <laughs> a young Pedro, a young Randy Johnson on that team, a slew of hitters. And by the way, Mets, I want you to listen to this. It was Omar Minaya that got rid of him. Okay, get rid of Omar. He's garbage. We would have won in 06 if he didn't make those stupid moves. Because I know, I can't say what I know because I'm going to get in big trouble. It's really controversial. But I know how Omar feels about certain races. I know. And, and you know what? He's not exactly all loving. But, and we'll leave it at that. And we will leave it at that. But anyway, outside of that, He's a lousy scout and, and judge of talent, and he needs to go. I can't believe the Mets even hired him back. That just goes to show that, that the Mets revert back to more and more. You know, it's like, like they say about a pig. You, you know, the pig rolls in the mud. He gets dirty. He loves it. And then you go out and you clean him. And then what does he do? He goes, rolls back in the mud again because he loves it. That's what the Mets do. They keep rolling back into losing because they love it. They are the same losers. I like Sandy Alderson. He can stay. Everybody else, let me tell you something, Steve Cohen. You call me, we'll have more championships than the Yankees when I'm, by the time I'm out of this world. Because I know who to get. I know how to win. You just let me at it. And I even know how to get players that don't make a lot of money that are just flat out good. That fly under the radar. I should have came to your rescue years ago, but I wanted to be a priest so God wouldn't let me. And who knows, maybe I will be someday again. But you know what? Until then, you need all the help and blessings you can get. Because you know what? The guys running your squad, <clears throat> get rid of them. Uh, you know, great, uh, great GM you hired, you know. Um, I'm sure the cops, cops thought so when he got arrested for DWI. That was great. Yeah. See, guys, I tell the truth. I'm not snowing nothing. I'm going to give it to you like it is. and. Um, uh, but anyway, um, and by the way, the, the Mania thing, he hates more than one group. I wasn't keying on black people. I wasn't because he hates everybody unless you're a certain group. That's his issue. He hates more than he just, I mean, it doesn't, he, it's not that he hates them, but he thinks a little less of you. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you have to be a certain type from a certain area of the world for him to love you. So, um, and that kind of hurt the Mets in 06. I really believe that. Um, But you know what? You got to treat everybody fair. And if they're good, I don't care where they're from, you play them. And if they're bad, you cut them. Because other races and nationalities can suck too. And they often do. So you get rid of them. If I was there, guys, with the Mets, I'm telling you right now, 
I would get the best players no matter who the heck they were. And if anybody said, criticized me for it, I'd tell them to go <laughs> off. Because I'm running the team, I know what I'm doing, and you don't. And you're not getting paid. And I don't care if you're a fan or not, shut up, because you don't know what you're doing. As most fans don't. Most fans are idiots. And you can't blame them because they don't know all the ins and outs of it. So it's more ignorant than idiot, which means you, I, I didn't know that. Ignorant is not a bad word. It just means I didn't know that. That's all it means. And, and um, a lot of the fans don't. And ESPN ain't helping them out because they don't teach them nothing. They don't even know half the stuff themselves that I know. I've been around longer than that. And I'm smarter than that. And I work for them, so I know that. You know, and this is my chance to um, let you know what they are. Just put it down. But, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, this is, uh, this is what it's about, folks. So, uh, Steve, please, I love the Mets, and I love you, and I love the fact you want to spend money. So hire me. Sandy Alderson's friends with my brother. Hire me. I can help you. I want to help you. And you don't always have to play. To get hired, that's another thing. Another, you know, this drives me crazy because, oh, well, he got hired because he played. So what? He might have been a dope and just talented and just knew how to do one thing well. Doesn't mean he's a general. It doesn't, and, and run, and can run everything, a smart general. It doesn't mean that. It means he was a player and he did his thing. That was his role. And now that role's over and he needs to go away. You need, most smart, the smartest men never played. These kids don't think, well, I want to play with him because he won titles. Yeah, I know. He was a great player, but it doesn't mean he's smart. Magic Johnson knew he wasn't that smart. He knew he couldn't coach. He did it for a week. He said, I'm out of here. He wasn't smart enough for that capacity. Making you good or smart at one thing doesn't mean you're smart at everything. That's why there's others to help you out. Because you need guidance. Everybody does. We all need it. Anybody says they don't need guidance is an idiot and a liar and in love with their own pride. They're in love with themselves. Anybody that dies and says they have no regrets is a liar. Because it means they're not humble enough to say to God, I'm sorry. And you're going to end up in hell. They're losers. Don't believe any of that crap. It's all hype. It's all a lie. And don't get tricked. Don't get tricked. Okay? This is what it is. You know, use your, use your brain and ask the Lord for the rest. Because your brain only goes so far. Don't trust science all the way. Why? Human beings make mistakes. And science is, is a product of human beings. So if they're going to make mistakes. Science is going to be wrong a lot. God's never wrong, ever. Use your head. Grow up, world, because our world's coming apart because you're stupid and you're letting yourself get pushed around. Stop it. You do it in life, you do it in sports. You're so stupid in sports, you don't even know what team's good. You need to stop it. And like I said in one of my other shows, it's all trickling down. Stupidity in life, stupidity, eventually it'll weaken the sports. And, that, and it does. It leaks into sports. And you believe all the crap they're selling you. These people are snake oil charmers. They want you to buy their product. You know what? They're liars. Liar, liar, liar. That's what you are. And you're scum because of it. Not because you lie. If you lie by mistake, okay. But no one lies by mistake 99% of the time. You're doing it to save your neck or to make yourself look good. You're wrong, and you need to go to church and confession and stop it now. You're in a front of God and, and human race. You're disgusting. Well, that's my picks, folks, and my commentary. Sorry I got into it, but I just can't. Sometimes you just got to come out. Shit's got to come. Shit's always got to come out on this show. And Rob will vouch for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, so... But like I'm saying, if you have a chance to go to the Hall of Fame, please do. It's amazing. I met Mariano Rivera. I met Pete Rose. I met, we, you know, Joe Torrey was up there with Brian Cashman. It was amazing. Um, I'd like to throw something else out there if Michael Kay is listening. Because I know he's a, I believe he's a genius, right? I think that's right. He said that once on, on Twitter. He's a Menza guy. I'm a Menza guy, too. Um, I have a very high IQ. And I'm going to tell you, Mike, you cried a lot a couple of weeks ago uh, when they were losing before the trade that a month ago. And you were, you know, everybody was panicking over there. But the two guys you got, and they're good players, um, Gallo and Rizzo, but 
it's almost like when you get a new manager, you change managers in the middle of the year. You start winning for a while, but then all of a sudden you get high. You think you can't lose. Then all of a sudden you're like, well, we're still the, kind of this team. And I think that's what you are. You're this team. And I'm, I'm very good at this. I looked over your schedule. You're going to win about 10 more games. Uh, but you got a break last night because Toronto didn't beat Baltimore, but that's not going to last. You know it. Um, Toronto is going to be one of the wild cards. And I picked them to be a wild card beginning of the year. And they just had a terrible year. And I think a lot of it had to do with they couldn't play at all and everything that was going on in the world. Um, but now they can, and they're more relaxed. They got a better hitting team. The Yankees have always been about hitting Mike. Don't give me this crap about the core four because it sometimes, you know, like a farmer, you get a bumper crop and they did, but most times you don't get that bumper crop. You have to trade away for other teams, bumper crop players or star players. And the Yankees have always done that. The Yankees would never have won in the 2000s even with the bumper crop. They didn't get a team's help from other teams like David Cohn, you know, like Doc Gooden, like, uh, like Strawberry, like uh, we can go even way back. I think you got Dave Kingman in the 70s. You know, you got him off, you know, because he had power. He actually helped you guys. But it was always those other guys. Uh, um, let's see, Tino from Seattle. You stole him and Jeff Nelson. And there were, there were, there were players I love before they got to the Yankees. I'm not a Yankee fan because they used to beat on you like a bass drum in Seattle. You know, and you got them, and that's why you won. Um, you stole to share it from Boston at the last minute. He was ready to sign with the Red Sox. You don't get him in 09. There is no World Series. And a don't have no great World Series because you ain't even in it. Um, you only have one player from that team that, that ever is left on from, the, uh, from being winners. These guys you got on your team, you're not, they're not winners. They're not. Uh, Rizzo is the only one now, too. I forgot you have Rizzo. So he won a couple years ago. But outside of him and Gardner, and Gardner's a if you if you hate the Yankees, you hate Gardner. He's such a gnat. I like to get bug spray and just shoot him with it. Um, but he's great. Yeah, you know, he's running like he's 28, which makes you think he's done steroids a little. His head's getting big like Barry Bonds. I'm surprised the helmet can fit. But um, he, he's a great, tough, hard-nosed player. He has a little Pete Rose in him, who I met up there. Um, but uh, that's what he has. And he's, he's a winner. He knows that. You know, I don't care if he's batting 215. Every time I watch him, he gets a base hit, walk, double, triple, occasionally a home run. He's a little, mm, that's what he is. And, uh, but he's a great player. You love him on your team. You hate him if, if he's not. And outside of him, you don't got guys that have heart like that. You know, I mean, LeMayu's solid. He can hit. He's older now, though. He's starting to lose it a little bit. But he's still good enough. And outside of those guys, Stanton, I love – well, I'm not even going to talk. I, I hate the Yankees, and I want to give you no tips on, on how to improve. I'm not going to give them to you because I think I know. How, I used to give my brother tips on the phone. My brother works at UCLA. He's at sports radio. Him out. You should have him on your show. He's one star you overlooked. You did not ever call, call on. He took care of Coach John Wooden. You should have him on your show. He knows a lot. He's smart. And um, he's done more things than you've ever done. He's done it longer. He has 38 national title rings. You've never done that. And, and, uh, but you're great. You're great. I love you. Not that I don't. But I'm telling you the truth because I tell the truth here. Uh, you should have him on your show. You should look him up and go get him. Um, I can't believe you haven't. But anyway, I'm not going to help you with Stanton and those other guys. Judge is great, though. But honestly, do you have a Hall of Famer on your team right now? Because you used to. You used to. You know, you always got a Hall of Famer or a, a me megastar for the time, whatever time of era it was. You know, I mean, look, I just went to the Hall of Fame. I'm going to tell you. Good pitching stops good defense is a crock of bunk. Okay. Remember Bob, what Bob Veal said and vice versa. Somehow people miss the vice versa part. You win because you have them. You score the most runs is why you win. And pitching has to be there to try to stop that fact. More times than not, it's not. But it's always about hitting. And the Yankees more than anybody have known it. You're the money ball team, not Oakland. You spend money. Oakland's a small ball. They're the petite ball. They're the midget ball. They're the losers. Minnesota's with them. A lot of other teams are with them. They don't spend money, so they don't win. In the Hall of Fame that I just went to, 99% of the people from the Yankees in that hall were hitters, not pitchers. Babe Ruth aside and Whitey Ford aside. But even Babe Ruth didn't pitch for you. 
and he hit home runs for them when he did hit for the Red Sox. He even hit home runs with the, uh, the Boston Braves at the end of his career. I believe he hit two in his last game, two or three. Am I right? So I think it's two and a base save. He's three for five, something like that. But in any case, I think he had three to last game. Maybe it was three for five. It was three homers, something like that. I, yeah, because it was 7-11. He went 7-14 in the last game. I think that was it. But nevertheless, it's all about hitting. And when you, that's why you started to win for a month because your guys were popping home runs. And, that, and then that took pressure off a judge who had a great – he's having a monster year. He's borderline Hall of Fame if he keeps it up. We'll see. I'm not going to say he's definite, but it's because he's got a long way to go. But if he keeps it up, he's got a shot. And outside of that, maybe Cole, maybe. But maybe not. He's borderline. I'm not sure about him. But all those rest of those guys, no. And that's why you're not – That's and that's why when you got the hitters, Gallo, Rizzo, they were popping home runs. That's why you were winning for a while. That took pressure off a of judge. And Stanton, who's t- tremendously inconsistent, he reminds me of Dave King. I call him the automatic out. I love it when he comes up because I know he's going to ruin that rally. He's a rally killer. When you got him, at first I was nervous. I was like, oh, boy. Then I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. This guy makes more outs than anything. He strikes out more than a lot more than he hits home runs. I don't care how far he hits it. Kingman hit him far too, but I love them. You just keep them. You keep giving them the extension. You know, you, you just keep doing it. So, so, uh, but yeah, but yeah, you just keep doing it and we'll see how that goes. See how that works out. But um, so anyway, uh, that's my show for today. And Rob will be on with me on Tuesday. I believe he said Tuesday. Okay, we got muted. I don't know why. But um, that's my show. Uh, what I was just saying about Stanton is I call him the automatic out. Okay? And uh, that's what he is. He's an automatic out. And, uh, uh, you know, he's Dave Kingman. Um, he strikes out, what, 200 times or whatever. And, uh, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Let him do it. Um, that's what Kingman did. Um, but... As long as you, as long as you keep them, and keep giving those extensions, you know it, it's great. It's great. Um, he leads the league in strikeouts, pretty much. I think he did last year, but um, you can't win with a guy like that. He's a loser. And like I said, when Rizzo got there and Gallo got that, that took pressure off of Stanton. Um, that took pressure off of the rest of your lineup, and um, that took and he and Stanton needs the pressure off because he can't do it alone. He can't. He's not. He's not a leader. He's not a leader. That's what it is. And it took pressure off a judge who's amazing. He's having a great year. Seems to be back from that wrist, wrist injury about a hundred percent. Now he's back. And um, he's had a monster year, but the Yankees don't have the superstars anymore. Judge is probably at Cole's really good. They're the only two that could be borderline Hall of Fame. The rest of those guys, they're terrible, but, um, and now reality sitting in, I don't, I know you're not going to catch Toronto. And I know that you're not um, – I, I, I don't know about Boston, though. They can save you. But if Oakland would actually start playing halfway decent, they can, over, they can flip you because you're going to lose a lot of games. You have a tough schedule at the end. Toronto doesn't. I'm good at that. I, I'm gonna see, I see them winning 16 or 17 more games. I could see it. Um, but at least 15 for sure, for sure. Um, and it's just a question of what Boston can hold on. If they can hold on, you ain't making it. And um, if Oakland can step up, and even Seattle, they're kind of creeping in there. If they can win a few, they can give you a lot of trouble because they're right on you now. They're only a game back. So, um, but that's my take on everything this week. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. I hope to get these picks out before most of these games start. And Rob and I will be there Tuesday. Rob will be back. We'll be doing another show. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, and view our show. It's growing, folks, and we're getting a lot of stars coming on. So please just watch us and bear with us and like us. And if you want to hate us, great. Just watch our show, you know? So um, thanks. And this is Bob Spino, the Bob Spino Talk Show, um, the sports show, uh, signing off. And have a nice day, everybody. 
We'll see you. Uh, sorry. We'll see you Tuesday. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody.